Alrighty then. My understanding is there's already been a shrink rip on Fields of Despair. I hadn't had a chance to have a look at it. I've been uh, back for a couple of days. I have been, uh, well, really I've been back for a day, I suppose. But uh, I'm really not in the mood to play any games at the moment. I'm kind of uh, drifting from table to table, trying to work out what it is uh, I want to get focused on. And I thought uh, I would open up this little bad boy and have a look at it. So if you've seen it before, I apologize. Uh, tune out of the big board and tune into something else or go roll dice and play game, a game yourself, which is, you know, really what you should do. You shouldn't be watching me. You should be playing a game right now. Get a small game, put it on a table, set it up, go make it happen. Get off your butt and go roll some dice, brothers. Anyway, in the meantime, since you are procrastinating and you're still here, let's have a look at this and uh, have another look at a very, very large game from GMT. And in fact, I'm gonna look up something very quickly here. I'm gonna pause the camera and look up something about uh, the production volume. And we're back. So uh, my suspicion was correct. This is a very large, heavy, I'm gonna say this is a six pound game. And <clears throat> in terms of production, GMT usually prints at a minimum 2,000, maybe nearly 3,000, all the way up to 5,000 copies when you look at something like Twilight Struggle when they do a run. Due to this game's size and the uh, weight and the, the components and the amount of map, uh, they only uh, manufactured uh, about a thousand copies of this, as best as I can tell. They've shipped 895, and they have 816 in stock. So, that, I thought that was interesting to note that this is not. If this is a, a game you're interested in, then you had best get your hiney to the store or pick up one second hand, because. It will not last very long at, uh, at at best. Now, probably what I should have done, because I've seen all these professional shrink rippers, is have a look at the back of the box first and tell you all about it, what it says and what comes in it and all that sort of fun stuff. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get right down to the bottom of the box here, see what's in here. Ooh, little block bags, very cute. And then all the blocks in the bottom with a little uh, supportive... Uh, structure in there to keep everything relatively flat and unbent. I like it. You obviously got French, British axis, and then look like some marker, marker blocks, probably for control or supply or something like that. And the usual swag bag of dice. So there's that, right? Uh, we don't need to mess around in there anymore. Rules of play, clock in at 23 pages. Full color, muted paper, no shiny glossy stuff. 22 pages of rules. Actually, it's probably gonna be about 20 pages of rules by the time we take, uh, yeah, 21 pages of rules by the time we take out the optionals, which I'm sure we'll all wanna play with, right? Uh, really nice examples in here. I have, I have only seen this played in uh, playtest mode on Vassal. I've seen some guys, uh, goofing around with it a little bit. I have not played the game myself, so I'll be curious to see how it all works out. It's a fair uh, amount of detail in here. And one thing that I do, or perhaps I'll read you just so you can get a uh, feel for what the game is about, right? It's a two player strategic simulation of the First World War on the Western Front. And players take control of the Allies and Central, or Central Powers fighting the war on land, at sea, and in the air, all while making tough economic decisions at home. So it is a strategic level game. Uh, so at that note, you know, the first, my first, first blush is, well, this is gonna end up being a, a very static linear game. I have been told by my friends who've played it, that is not the case. So next, we have some very evocative artwork on all of the, each cover, each uh, cover of the magazine or the booklet has a different artwork. Uh, very impressive. The cover art was uh, painted, a painting by Richard Jack uh, from uh, Vimy Ridge. 
So, playbook, wow, 43 pages with an extended example of play. Put this over here, so you can see it a little better. <coughs> Scenario special rules. There are some, uh, obviously, a handful of different scenario types. Actually, you know what? Maybe there's not. What did I just see here? No. Nope. There is just the campaign. Is that right? Scenario special rules. That's it. So here we go. Scenario one, two, three, four, and five. I was going to say, man, only one scenario. That would be a. Uh, that would upset all the grognards. Okay, let's see what we got here. Pretty uh, extensive two page outline from the designer. Kurt's a pretty cool guy, by the way. Well worth uh, you getting to know him on Facebook. I'm sure he'd love to play with you. Uh, I've actually posted some gameplay uh, the first month or two from Kurt uh, when he was doing playtesting uh, way back in the day. So you could look for Fields of Despair on the blog and uh, and learn all about it. So different scenarios, positioning, different stages in the war that are most interesting. 1914, 14 through 18, the Grand Campaign, and there's a couple of bits in the middle here. Final push, etc., etc. So... Uh, well, looks rather spanky, doesn't it? Very nice. So, what am I looking at here? Huh. Player screens. So it would appear that we're going to be keeping information uh, separate from each other. Very nice. I saw several iterations of these these stickers and these look really nice. I like them. Got the icons in the back there. It's a watermarked and then the unit type and then these these step indicators as well. US forces there as well. And then the map. Now the map I'm probably gonna have a hard time with just because it's fairly large. There are counters in here also for artillery and aircraft, which are gorgeous, large counters. You know, here's your, here's your standard counter, right? I don't want this to pop out yet. And then you've got some, just for reference sake. Very nice, really nicely done. What's on the back of these? Nothing, so we keep these uh, hidden by the looks of it, or you'll be able to at least. Really don't like it when encounters uh, come and they've got white backs on them. And then you can't, uh, you, it takes twice as long to sort everything. Okay, so lots of charge, charts, solitaire sequence, combat sequence, solitaire recon, Central Powers Guide. I if there's two of these. Yes, there's one for each. By the looks of it. Is there? I'm trying to do this all on the fly here, fellas. Okay. General track. 150 boxes. That's disconcerting. Uh, air maintenance, artillery, supply for both sides. Charts. Sequence of play on it. I know that glare's annoying. Let's see if I can wind this down like that. Okay, and two, two CRTs. combat tables which we will uh, have to look at before we make any 
uninformed comments. Oh, there's the other one of those. Okay. All right, the map. I'm sure you're all eager to see that a little bit. So let's see if we can't, uh, I, I may just open up a portion of it. Wow. It is heavy and it is fairly pretty. I will give it that. Let's see. This, you know, I, I don't know who's doing the map art these days over at GMT, but they are doing, I've, I know I've got upside down guys, so try not to freak out, all right? But <coughs> that's beautiful. Let me just move this camera, this uh, light. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, and try a bunch of tracks on the side there. Naval warfare, Eastern Front tracking, other bits and pieces, your your turn track. So there you have it. I will look forward to uh, playing this in detail at some point in the near future, and we'll uh, provide some updates. I hope you enjoyed it.